Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, a man that's going to be defending his Bantamweight title coming Friday night, March the 2nd at Bellator 195 as he's challenged by Leandro Higro. Higo, it is Darian Caldwell. Darian, I appreciate the time. Uh, you know, as uh, it's been a couple months since you, you won the title, and, and I want to start off with is do you feel that you get the respect you deserve from the MMA community with, you know, being the Bellator champion? Um, not necessarily, you know, I think, uh, the MMA community as a whole, um, they only really feel like the best guys out of UFC. And, um, I don't think that's true. i actually, in fact, I know that's not true. Um, I think, uh, that they really, um, lose that closed mindedness. If they opened up a little bit, they see, um, there's talent everywhere. There's, there's guys in Delta who are the best in the world, and I'm one. Rankings are very subjective. One person can think one thing, another person can think another way. But I, I was looking at the Fight Matrix rank, uh, rankings at 135 pounds. It has you as number six, Eduardo Dantas, who you beat for the title, at, at number 11. The guys in front of you, Junior Vera, Mom Race, Cody Garbrandt, Dominic Cruz, and, and TJ Dillashaw. For the people... That that think you're not you know that highly ranked. Why would you tell them that you are the best band of weight in the world? I'm the best band of weight in the world because nobody poses the threats that I do. You know, um, nobody can do what I do. Um, in reality, I'm undefeated. Nobody can beat me. You know, I, the fight fight against Baby Joe, I lost. You know, I, I turned it around and beat this guy. You know, there's not a single band of weight on this planet that that can beat me that I can't beat. So I can beat every single one of these guys, and then that's a fact. Everyone knows about uh, your your amateur wrestling, uh, being uh, wrestling at NC State. And one of the things I saw with Leandro is that he brought in Henry Cejudo to help him get ready for your wrestling. Did you and Henry's pass ever cross at any time while you were both wrestlers? Yeah, Henry's a little guy. You know, he's always been a 25 pounder. I've I've always been a 49 pounder. So. Uh, Henry, he's, he's a smaller guy. You know, he doesn't pose any of the threats that I pose. You know, he he's an Olympic champion, and that's a huge that's a huge feat. You know, I give him a lot of props for that. But you know, uh, I remember um, our senior year. You know, uh, coming out, uh, we were both wrestling and adapted down. We were both number one guys in the country, um, and I feel like I put on a little bit better performance than he did. You know. Um, obviously, he went on and wrestled, uh, went straight to uh, the Olympic Training Center and wrestled in the Olympics, making the Olympic team. But, uh, and I took the college route, you know. Um, but um, for him, to, uh, I think they, they've already been teammates before that, prior to that, you know. Um, I know I was at, I, I trained at Fight Ready where um, uh, I, I went there a few times, you know, uh, where Henry Cejudo is. And, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't, I don't think me and Henry are anything alike in terms of our styles of wrestling. You know, uh, I don't, I don't know if his style doesn't transition like mine does. Yeah, I, I mentioned about NC State and Bellator. You know, went to Penn State University last year uh, with Phil Davis. Is there a part of you that has maybe you have already have told Bellator of Hey, why why are we not going to NC State and having me headline a show on that campus? Yeah, I think that would be awesome, honestly. I think uh, NC State and the whole Wolfpack Nation is really thrive off that. They they love that. I think I know we can uh, pack the house uh, with that with uh, Bellator to make that happen. You know, obviously I've been fighting in Oklahoma. Uh, the fight in, in North Carolina would be awesome for me. It'd be a big deal uh, there as well as you know, New Jersey. You know, where I can sell a lot of fans and pack the house and sell it out. You know, here in California, I can sell it out. You know. So uh, once they realize that, then I think they'll, uh, they'll figure out a way to get me to North Carolina and, and New Jersey and, and California as well. Would headlining a show on the campus of NC State be almost like a bucket list item for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just because that's my item, item model, you know. Uh, I, I, got, I, got a, I got that flag raised. I got my banner raised up in, in, at NC State, you know, and so to – uh, for Bellator to go to NC State and hang my my world championship banner right next to my my national championship banner, you know, and 
uh, me be, be able to go out there and compete, you know, I, I think it'll be, you know, something that everyone wants to see. It's definitely something that I want to do. They always talk, you always hear fighters talk about why they love fighting. Every, everyone's got a different answer. For you, wh- why do you love fighting so much? Well, I grew up fighting, you know. Um, it's not necessarily I love fighting. I just love to compete. I love winning, you know. I love uh, being put in, you know, tough situations, you know. Fighting's the toughest sport there is, you know. And, uh, I love to um be put through the kiln, as my old fo- football coaches say. You know, you, you got to go through the kiln. You go into the kiln. You know, so, um, to be, be put through the fire. You know, it's something I love to do, and I think uh, that's what fighting does. It, it puts you through that fire, and either you're gonna come out burnt, or you know, you're gonna come out, you're gonna come out clean. And taking on Leandro Higo here, when this fight was offered, did, did this fight excite you at all? Well, every fight excites me. You know. Um, Anytime I step in that cage, I'm excited to go up against anybody. You know, it doesn't really matter who they put in front of me. You know, it's, it's just another name. Because I think for a lot of fans, they were, I think they were probably hoping that it was going to be Michael McDonald. And obviously a win here probably most likely sets, sets that title fight up there. But was was that kind of your hope that, that it, the next fight would have been Michael McDonald? Uh, well... I think Michael McDonald's got to, you know, he he had to do a little bit of proving. You know, we we had to see him inside the Bellator cage. You know, I don't know how he how he was doing uh, uh, toward the end of his UFC career. You know, inside that octagon. So uh, I think it was, you know, it's more about, you know, how is this guy gonna do once he's in different environment under different lights? Um, how can he perform? So uh, he went out and got a win in December and. Um, after I get the job done, I'm looking forward to, you know, class of hazard this man. And, and in terms of this fight with Leandro, how do how do you see the victory coming? I don't see Leandro making the pass first. I see I see him stiff on the canvas or um, tapping out. And of course, everyone's going to be able to watch this fight coming up on Friday night, March the second, live on the Paramount Network, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Bellator 195. As Darian's going to make his title defense against Leandro Higo. Darian, as always, man, I appreciate time and look forward to seeing your fight on Friday. Always a pleasure, man.